Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful Monday. This is Henry Harris. And this week we are into session three of my book, Facing Our Wounds. And I tell you, uh, so many people from not just in America, but around the world, it's ordering facing our wounds. And, um, and I'll just put a plug in here that if you haven't received the book yet, maybe you need to order it. Go to Amazon.com right now and get your copy of Facing Our Wounds. All of us have been wounded. Uh, that word trauma simply means wound. We've all been wounded. We are a wounded people. And um, and I believe at times we need help. And what uh, better source or tool to use than facing our wounds? So go do that. As many of you know, every week I do... Uh, for the next 10 weeks, we're on week three now. I've been kind of coming, doing like an overview of each chapter. I'll read like certain portions uh, of each chapter. And in this week, we are in chapter three. And chapter three is it's called It Takes Time. So I'm going to read a portion and then I'll um, explain as I go. Um, no matter the wound you have, healing will take time. Healing is a process and a work. No wound heals overnight. So don't feel as if you have to rush the process of healing. The wound will heal in its own time. And you know, <clears throat> when I wrote that, the word process was like in my mind because it's just like, if you think about it, it's just like in the natural, like when you've experienced a wound or hurt or something of that nature in your life, you know, it's going to take time to heal. Even if you go in and have surgery, your doctor is not going to say, like you can't go in and have heart surgery today, which is Monday. And then tomorrow your doctor is going to say, well, everything's going to be great tomorrow. No, it's a process. And I think we need to give ourselves the grace to heal. And that's something that chapter three kind of digs into that nobody's rushing you to heal and nobody's telling you how to develop and how to do your own process in healing. You know, for some people, uh, for some people, it may take a while for them to heal. For some people, it may take a, a short period of time for them to heal, but you have to give yourself the grace to heal. It takes time. Don't rush the process. It's a process. Healing is a process. If you've been wounded, wounded today in some capacity, you need to realize and hit the brakes. Don't try to rush it. Let, it, let healing flow um, like streams of water in your life. Allow it to run its course. Don't, don't try to rush it. Uh, here's another portion in chapter three that I've highlighted. In my experience, sometimes the healing process is just as painful as the wound because we want to heal and we want it to be done. Wow. And I wrote that in there because that's something that I still struggle with to this day. Some wounds, maybe from my childhood or things I've been through in my life. You know, we want to get it over with. I, I just can't. And, and, and that's normal. That is the normal human response to anyone that's in any type of pain. We want to figure out a, an exit or a uh, escape. I don't like pain. I want to get out. So I think that's the normal response. Um, and the healing process, not only what you're going through, not only is your wound painful, or my wound was painful at one time, sometimes the healing process is just as painful. Why? Because you finally come to grips with, I have to deal with this. And like we talked about last week, I can't deny this anymore. The, my wounds and my trauma has now appeared on the surface. Now that it's there, I have to let it run its course. I have to let it heal <clears throat> on its own time. Starting the healing process in your life will require your participation. I like this part. No one is ever healed without their consent. That means 
if there's something in your life, a wound in your life, or something you were traumatized by in your life that needs attention, that needs healing, uh, nobody else is going to be involved in that decision. It's a decision that you have to make in your life. It's something that you have to say uh, within yourself and to yourself that I need healing. I need help. So my healing came and I'm still healing. I'm, I haven't arrived yet. I'm still healing. There's still things in my life, um, the layers of pain and trauma and things in my life that I'm still healing. You know, I was speaking with my, you many you probably know William Paul Young, the author of The Shack. We was on the phone as I was putting this book together. And, and you know, we was having an interesting conversation. And um, something just hit me when I was talking to him about pain and trauma. And then what hit me was, I said, you know, Paul, pain comes in different levels. Levels It comes in layers. Like just when you get over something, there's something else. That's why I say it takes time. And he says, Henry, I love his response. He said, Henry, not only does pain comes in layers, but healing comes in layers. Just as sure as you were wounded, there is healing for you. So I really like that. You will need to participate in the healing process. Healing is not instant, but progressive. It goes back to what I said earlier. Um, you go to the doctor, and this is just a physical sense. You go to the doctor, uh, you're not going to be better by tomorrow. It may take weeks. It may take, take months. It takes time. Here's another portion in chapter three that I wrote. Sometimes you have to give yourself the grace to heal. And that's something I said earlier, too. That's something that many of us are not really doing. Uh, we allow people to dictate to us how to heal. We, we, and that's what I love about this book. Uh, I don't really give people, I don't really come across in this book and say, if you want to be healed, this is how you have to do it. No, I give people the grace to heal and how they choose to heal. For some people, it may be their faith. For some people, it may be seeing a therapist. We don't have the right or the authority to tell people how to do it. We shouldn't come up with strategies and how to do it, but we can kind of navigate and help people. And that's what facing our wounds does. It helps you to navigate through your trauma and through your pain, but all alone reaching a place of full wholeness and healing that I believe we all long for. Here's another portion of chapter three. You see, guilt says, I did something wrong. But shame says I am something wrong. I had to understand that I am not shame and neither are you. I am not what I did and neither are you. I had many wounds, but I didn't realize that every wound heals differently. Did you know that today? My wound may not be like your wound may be big. Mine may be small. Yours may be severe. Mine may not be uh, as severe. The reality of it is we all heal differently because we all have been wounded differently. Healing doesn't happen all at once. So stop looking for a quick fix. And many of us do that. It's like, we live in a popcorn society. Like you put it in the microwave and pop, 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 and it's right there. Healing, I'm, I hate to break the news to you. In this book, everybody's saying this book is so transparent. Yeah, I'm going to be real with you. I'm not going to say, oh, you're going to be better by tomorrow. You're going to be better by next week. That's my, I will hope that works for you. But for many of us who have been like entrenched with trauma and pain and heartache and devastation and loss, Realistically, that doesn't really happen. It takes time. The trauma hurts. The pain hurts. The healing process even hurts because you have to deal with it. You have to, I have to finally face the very thing that traumatized me. Sometimes healing is a never ending journey with no destination. You may be saying, I'm trying to reach it. You, you never will because. Like I said, pain comes in layers, healing comes in layers, but as you heal, you keep going. As long 
let me just break the news to you. As long as you are in this life, on this earth, you can hide from it. You can deny it. You can not be around people. You will end up hurt in some capacity. And I know that's not good news, but it is. Later on, we'll talk about people who put up an emotional wall. Sometimes we feel like, well, if I just put up an emotional wall, I won't get hurt again. <laughs> that's laughable. You know how many times I put up an emotional wall thinking like uh, I won't get hurt again or experience trauma? I, it happens. And sometimes it hits you right when you least expect it. So we need to understand that uh, healing is a never-ending journey. That's the way life is. And sometimes it, it's with no destination involved. You know why? Because it's a never-ending journey. And until you meet your day, we all will have to face our wounds. So thank you so much for uh, watching today. Next week, we will get into uh, session uh, three. We're getting, I'm sorry, we'll get into session four next week. And next week, we're going to talk about dealing with the wounds of rejection and abuse. And this is wonderful that I'm doing. If you if you want to, go back and look at the other th uh, two sessions. Today, we're on session three. And those who have the book, uh, you can follow along. I'm kind of skipping around a little bit, but you can kind of follow along and see where I'm going. And this is just a little summary. I'm just reading portions of it. I'm not going to read it all because you need to order it on Amazon. <laughs> but I'm just reading portions and kind of like giving you the heart of the author. Like, what was my motive? What was my intent? What, what did I mean? You know, um, and, and that's why I'm doing this to, to summarize it. So next week, we're going to talk about some very, very serious dealing with the wounds of rejection and abuse. That'll be session four next week. I want to wish all of you a happy holiday today. Today is Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day, holiday. And I'm very grateful for him, as I posted earlier this morning, the impact that he had not only in America, but uh, around the globe. He had a global impact. And I'm inspired by him and his ministry and, <clears throat> and what he brought to the world, what he brought to nations. So, Happy Martin Luther King Jr.'s Day to many of you today. I hope you're safe out there. Um, there's so much going on out there in the world, and we all need help. We all need healing. And once again, if you haven't ordered the book, go to Amazon right now and just type in Facing Our Wounds. To those that are watching uh, who haven't received the book yet, we got some books that are actually I'm going to be shipping out tomorrow. Um my goal is by the end of the month, I'll have all the books shipped out of uh, the people who've ordered. So if you're like, well, I ordered, I haven't got it yet. It's trust me, it's coming. I mean, you see all the pictures of people who, and there's been some people reached out to me and said, I haven't got my book yet. And then the next day they'll message, oh, it just showed up in the mail. It takes time. <laughs> I'm just being goofy, but I hope y'all have an amazing day. Uh, remember once again, uh, the book is, I believe, is 16 on Amazon. Uh, go and order the book. You also order directly through me, too. If you want to via message me on here, um, I can tell you how you can get a copy of Facing Our Wounds. And almost everybody has it. You know why? Because pain is a universal language. Sadness is a universal language. Heartache is a universal language. It's something that we've all been through. So that's why everybody can relate to it. So I hope you have an amazing day today, and I'll see you next week for session four.